everyone. My name is Lian, and I'm a certified sake sommelier from sunny Singapore. So a little bit introduction about me. I uh, studied in Japan for some years, and then I actually decided to bring back the concept of Japanese sake to Singapore because I realized that in Singapore, the varieties of sake is not that much compared to 10 years ago. So we decided to bring in as much as possible. So 10 years ago, I decided to bring in a variety of Japanese sake to pair with uh, Japanese food. So today is just a short introduction and due to the time constraint, I'll be sharing the different types of sake variety and how when you take a look at the sake menu, you'll be able to select the best sake and to pair with your favorite Japanese cuisine. So without further ado, I will begin the short speech now. Thank you. Okay, so now we will be talking about the must know about Japanese sake. So sake has been around for many years close to a thousand years. So sake is used to be only be drink, drank in Japan and now it's actually being exported to the overseas market. So just a quick few pointers, four pointers about Japanese sake. Sake is brewed and not distilled. The alcohol content is usually about 15 to 19%, not really high and compared to wine, of course it is a much, a bit of a slight difference. Sake is determined by how much the rice has been milled. So to make it a layman's simpler terms, the more you polish the rice, the better the sake it is. And for regarding the aging and temperature and storage, sake will have to be consumed when young, means you will have to try the sake when it's on a good temperature. So it's best to keep chilled. So we'll move on to the next slide we'll be talking about the most important criteria in sake making. So sake making has a four big main criteria. We have the rice, the water, the toji, and the atmosphere and environment. So the famous rice for the Japanese sake are like the Yamada Nishiki rice. And then for the water, it will be, for example, the famous water in Japan will be the Miyamizu that is took from the, well, the traditional well where you took the water out. And then for the toji, it's a, like a sake master brewer. So toji are actually very important in the whole sake making process. They are the final decision maker who actually drink the sake and to know whether the sake is the of a correct taste before it is kept closed for bottling. And the last one will be the atmosphere and environment. Atmosphere and environment is very important as you guys should know that Japan, we have the main city like Tokyo, they are very hustling, very crowded now. These prefectures are very, uh, very crowded and are not able to brew good sake. So usually for Japanese sake making, are usually found in environment that has a good and nice atmosphere. Not with the many cars and it's just a very nice and good environment for making sake. So these are the four main criteria in choosing, in making a sake. Thank you. And then followed by the next one, which I will not be going more onto it, is because that's the sake making process. It is actually a bit long. You are not required to know more about it, but we were just to have a show. It starts from the rice polishing, rice polishing to the water and soaking, followed by steaming and making of yeast, Y-E-A-S-T, yeast, followed by filtering. And then we will actually press the mixture out so that the liquid and the residue is kept separately, followed by brewing. And then we will have to make the yeast, yeast starter and followed by a pasteurization and maturing. Maturing, we have to storage before we bottling and do the finished product. You are not required to know more about this when choosing your sake selection, but it is an extra knowledge for you to understand more. Also, we have the types of frequently used sake rice. So like what I mentioned, Yamada Nishiki, they are the much more popular rice as they have larger quantity in the Japan farm. So usually the Japanese rice that you eat from your teishoku and the sake rice are totally two different things and they are not exactly the same. So 
for the Japanese, for the sake rice, it is actually much more taller than our normal eating rice. So please remember that you are not allowed to eat normally from the sake rice. So both are very different things. Hence, when you go to Japan, you see a sake rice from the brewery, please do not bring it back to cook it. It will taste very bad. Followed by, we will be sharing the grades of sake. We have the regular sake, which is the futsushu, and we have the special designation sake. It's the tokute meishoshu. So they are known as the much more premium sake. So two categories, and I will break down to you to share more about the tokute meishoshu. Special grade sake. So we have the rice milling process. The rice milling process, like what I've mentioned in the first few slides, that the more you polish, the better it is. So based on this screen, we can see that the brown rice, if we were to call the size 100%, then followed by Jumai 70%, means it has polished away 30% with a remaining of 70% left. And followed by a ginjo grade, which is much more fruity, left of 60%, and the most premium grade, Thai ginjo, which has left a residue of 50%. So the more you polish away the fat and the protein, the closer you can go to the pure starch, and the better the sake it will be. So this is just a simple illustration that I've drawn. You can feel free to take a look. It's polished as closer to the heart. So the heart of the rice, we call it the shimpako. Yeah, so shimpako. Followed by the tokute meishoshu. So this is the special designation sake. So I have done up the category for the junmai grade. Junmai category is made from the rice and the koji. And for the alcohol added, which is the like a non junmai, we have the ginjo dai ginjo the kubetsu honjozo. They are known as the distilled alcohol. Yes. After that, followed by we have the other types of sake. We have a nigori sake and a genshu sake. So for the nigori sake. They are like a different variety. They are more like a cloudy. And then for the Genshu, it's more of a stronger alcohol. After that, we have followed by the Nama Sake and we have the Nama Chozo Sake. So also we have like more detailed Sake, Yamahai and Kimoto. As due to time constraint, I will not be going more details on to it. And then also we'll have the toji. Toji is like what I mentioned, it's one of the main criteria for sake making. So we have the different types of uh, toji group. They are the group of sake makers known as a kurabito. So Tamba toji, Ichigo toji, and Nambu toji from Iwate prefecture, they are more of the popular toji in Japan. And then we will be follow up with the sake meter value. So when you actually take a bottle of a sake, a bottle of a sake, and when you actually turn it to the label behind, the label was stated the sake meter value, stated SMV. So the negative means sweet and the positive one means dry. So all these labels and information can usually be found in the different types of a sake bottle, or in fact, from the front label where you can identify the words. So followed by the last page will be the known as the sake taste profile. So usually we have to have more advanced drinkers to know about sake tasting. We will usually take a look at the sake taste profile where they can know of the different types of category. And for Singapore, a very sunny hot weather and Asia countries, usually customers will prefer refreshing sake as a starter sake. So you will be more awake and will actually wet your appetite when you drink the refreshing sake known as the social. And afterwards, we'll be followed by the aromatic sake for something that's nice and aromatic and followed by the rich sake. That is, we're able to leave a long lasting note in your palate after you finish your meal. So even after you finish your meal and sake pairing, you will be able to enjoy the very sake aroma will still linger in your mouth. And lastly, followed by Aged sake, which is more rare in this situation, as rare aged sake are much harder to find in the overseas market and also included in Japan, I believe. 
So these are the four main sake taste profile that you'll be uh, more commonly seen in the market, like mostly like aromatic, refreshing, rich or aged. While I mentioned aged will be much more of a lesser, not common. And the other three, aromatic, refreshing and rich sake will be much more be common. So together with Nihongo Manabu, we have actually collaborated on three types of cosmia for you to enjoy Japanese cuisine and sake drinking while learning Japanese language. So we have a three types of cosmia. So firstly is the nomi set. Nomi set where you have to enjoy Japanese sake with while talking to the sensei. So I hope with a bit of a sake drinking, you will be able to have more courage and then to speak more of the Japanese words to the sensei, do not be shy. So for the next one, we also have the cost set. For the cost set, we, for the cost set, we will have the three cost Japanese deluxe meal. You can choose from any of the cost as stated. So we have here is the unagi set, saloon stick set, and the kaisen okonomiyaki set with a Japanese sake. And then for the third pairing, we'll be having the kazoku set where you and your family can bond together while staying safe at home. All of you can sit down together and enjoy Japanese food and sake together while learning Japanese language from Nihongo Manabu. So let me introduce one of the sake. This sake will be the one that stated in the menu. So this sake is a Kiku Masamone Kimoto Daiginjo Sake. It is a premium sake label from Hyogo Prefecture. As you can see here, Kimoto. Kimoto is a type of traditional sake making where they will actually make sake using a long pole to do the sake. So maybe some of the pictures included in here, you can, you can take a look. This is a type of a Kimoto sake making process. And after that, for this sake is very premium and I would say sophisticated and easy, yet easy to drink. It is one of our sommelier's recommendation for the sake, and it is also an award-winning sake. This sake has won in many contests, and in 2019, they have won in the International Wine Challenge, and also in 2018, they have won in the Superior Taste Award. So for this sake, it comes in two sizes, and which is 300 ml and 720 ml. This sake is brewed using traditional and labor intensive Kimoto method, which results in a very signature clean and crisp taste. The sake is also difficult to brew, hence we will have the slightly tart and like a slightly resemblance of pear with a rich aftertaste flavor. It can be savored either at room temperature or my recommendation is to be served chilled and can be paired with any of the deluxe tree cost meal. So I hope that you can have a good meal while drinking and drinking Japanese sake while learning Japanese language. So have fun exploring Japanese culture. And I hope that my uh, little chat with you guys can deepen your knowledge regarding Japanese sake and food pairing. Thank you very much. Please enjoy. Itadakimasu.